Hey, it's Yara, and I'm here to help you break down your ballot. I know this election has felt exhausting and at times even depressing, but don't you also feel inspired, empowered, hopeful that we get to choose the people and policies that affect us and our communities? We basically get to decide who works for us. You're a boss. Okay, so voting has already begun, and that voting window closes on November 3rd. So let's get to work. This is how I do it. Step one, get a copy of your ballot. Whether you're voting by mail or in person, don't wait until the last minute to find out what's on the ballot and decide how you're voting. That's like turning a take home open book exam into a pop quiz. Instead, take advantage of the fact that you get to see the questions and prepare your answers long before test time. Ballotpedia.org is a great resource for sample ballots. I live in LA and the county offers an interactive sample ballot I can use to save my choices ahead of time. Search online for the best option for you. Step two, look closely at the choices. When you first see your ballot, I recommend taking a deep breath. Feeling overwhelmed and confused by your ballot is totally normal, especially if you're new to voting. I counted 25 choices on my ballot. That's right, 25. There are generally two types of votes you'll be making, one for people and one for policies. For people, you might get to choose Congress people, judges, school board members, district attorneys, county supervisors, and even railroad commissioners. I see you, Texas. For policies, 32 states have ballot measures that will affect everything from taxes to marijuana laws to voting itself. The further down the ballot you go, the fewer people tend to vote, and the more power you have when you take the whole ballot seriously. Step three, mark up your ballot. I grab my sample ballot out and literally highlight it. Ready for this? Green means I know how I'm voting. Yellow means I'm not sure. And red means I have no idea what this is about. Remember when you weren't allowed to draw in your textbook? This isn't that. Mark up your sample ballot in whatever way works for you. Step four, research. For the parts I don't know, I look to my voting crew. That includes a whole range of sources. Family members, friends, folks on social media, even podcasts, websites, and organizations. Basically, I'm checking in with sources I trust, from my mama to local nonprofits, to get some insight so I can make an informed vote that aligns with my values. I basically turn voting into a group project. Sometimes my friends and I split up the ballot initiatives and then swap notes. Yeah, I'm a democracy nerd, but so are you for watching this video, so. Step five is to write down your choices. That way, I have a clear reference to use when I fill out my real ballot whether I'm mailing it in or physically going to the polls. Which brings me to my sixth and final step. Confirm your voting plan. What good is all of this work if I don't actually submit the ballot in the right way at the right time? Personally, I'm planning to vote early and in person, but there are so many options this year. Here's what I recommend. If you're voting by mail, check the deadlines and the rules. Some states require you to submit witness signatures and a copy of your ID. Some need your ballots postmarked by November 3rd. Others require them to arrive by November 3rd. And many let you track your ballot just like a package. A good resource is IamAVoter.com, but confirm the rules and options through your local election commission website just to be safe. If you're voting in person, confirm your registration status, your polling location, and its hours. Jot your newly gathered info down in your phone and send it to some of the people in your voting crew. Checks and balances, people. Now we're ready to vote and fully exercise our rights. Let's do this.